All right, so in case you guys didn't understand what's going on, the speaker hasn't turned up. So what's your name? Dan. Dan, and I'm Sid. We're both going to pretend to be the speaker. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and talk really fast. So we're going to man in the middle, reverse engineer. We're going to, I don't know, be, ask you guys what you think the, the talk is about, because we'll see. Um, we've, sorry, what was your name? Estera. Estera has found the slides on, on SharePoint, one of those slide sharing things. Okay. So we're going to see what happens. Might be a total failure. So actually, this could be the first time that uh, the, uh, no speaker, you just ask a member from the audience, please do this to, to the presentation. You can do it. So give a round of applause for these three. And um, <laughs> the floor, I, floor is yours. So. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to wing it. The talk is, as you can obviously see, about um, just the trust that Firefox specifically puts into add-ons that it probably shouldn't. So I was reading the abstract that he posted, and it was something along the lines of... Um, what do you mean? Sorry? sorry. Keep sorry. it in your face. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yell if we're being too quiet or too loud or you don't understand us <laughs> or whatever. Um, right. I'm just going to pretend that you see what I see, and I'm going to explain the slide. Abusing and exploiting Firefox with add-ons, and I am now Ajin Abraham. Whoa. You might want to see these two. Yeah. Um, should we explain who he is? No. Probably not relevant. <laughs> All right. OK. Table of contents doesn't make much sense to you. Firefox is an awesome web browser. Step one, I can believe that. <laughs> um, now that's kind of actually true. It got benchmarked against Chrome. It's been losing for like a long time, uh, specifically the JavaScript engine. It finally beat Chromium or Chrome. I'm not sure which. Same thing, right? Um, for the first time in years. So it's like getting there. Is that recent? Um, sorry? Is that recent stuff? Yeah, within the last couple of months. Nice. So like, yeah. Because a lot of people left it because of the speed issues, and like, it's kind of catching up again. OK. Add-ons are rich. Firefox supports a variety of programming languages. Does it? What? Firefox supports a variety of programming languages for add-on development. What does it support? C. C, yeah. Java. I guess. Java. For add-ons? Really? I thought it was just I thought JavaScript. it was only JavaScript and XUL. <laughs> so shout that a bit louder. XP.com. I thought that was like a live. OK, if you say so, I'd take your word for it. OK, uh, we accept words. That's one protocol we, we speak. Sorry, a bit louder, please. XP.com is the bridge into the C library from JavaScript. Is that correct? OK, yes, cooperation. Yes. <laughs> oh, in fact, the next bullet point. JavaScript with XP Connect, XUL, <laughs> JSC types, <laughs> web workers. Maybe we should read ahead. Yes, maybe we should. <laughs> oh my god, I look like a terrorist. Oh, gee. <laughs> All right. So, let, yeah. let, let, yeah, let's let take me turns. talk. Let me talk. Um, they tell you need. This is bad English. Why is this on, on it's, internet? It's by OWASP, so not Mozilla. Oh, this is like OWASP right, is yeah. the Open Web Application Security Project, and they generally do good work trying to um, report what's a common vulnerability, how you mitigate against these things. Yeah, but this is this is about building add-ons. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, add-ons. Uh, there's some stuff about how you write your own add-ons for Firefox, which is kind of interesting. But I think there's plenty of add-ons already in existence that uh, will help you tremendously um, while hacking. Um, oh, 
This is interesting. Sorry, we have a question. Uh, hang on, hang on. I'm going to give you the mic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, the question was, what page are we on? Because I'm trying to follow the slides on my computer. Hey. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> Can you also post the link on the um, C um, CCC, on the OHM IRC, so that anyone who else who's here on the IRC can join in? Uh, okay, go to, this will apply to everyone this way, go to the OHM wiki, search for the word IRC. Yeah, go to the wiki, search for the word IRC. It will link to a page, and it says, it's, I think it's irc.accessforall. Dot net something? I don't know. Yeah. I idle on it. I don't care what the server is. This is interesting. Page eight, but yeah. And okay, we'll try and say whenever we go forward a page. Yeah. Because I'm, it's not I'm obvious. Skipping ahead just a bit, I, I was too soon um, expecting this was about existing add ons. I think. No, it's about an add on he has written which is on GitHub, and there will probably be a link at the end, um, which hijacks your browser. Yeah. That's the fancy demo that we obviously can't demo. Right. But there's screenshots, so. Um. <laughs> oh, gee, this is way over my head. OK, OK. <laughs> Don't worry. OK, so how an extension, what an extension has. There's a chrome.manifest file. Doesn't, I don't know what that is. There's an install to RDF which says, like, I am compatible with these versions. Chrome.manifest Chrome probably says, I require these permissions, or this is my, this is my file structure, whatever. Uh, it has localizations, it has skins, and it has the JavaScript that it executes. All you really need, according to this, you need the Chrome manifest, you need the overlay XUL, which is the GUI, like whether it has buttons in the menu or tooltips or whatever. Uh, install to RDF, which, as I said, says which versions of Firefox it's compatible with, among other things, when it was built, who it's built by, who the maintainer is. URLs to the home page and the uh, um, actual JavaScript. Oh, next page explains what all of these files do, which I think I just summarized. Okay, there is absolutely no mechanism. I'm reading word for word. Uh, we are on slide eight. Again. Again. Why? There is absolutely no mechanism to restrict the privileges of add ons. I'm taking his word for this. <laughs> Someone shout if, if this is debatable. Add-on code is fully trusted. Not much security checks. OK. Did someone say something? Page three for you. Uh, were you hang on, why are we still on page eight? I don't get it. Well, <laughs> oh, probably it's using Prezi, so. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. Um, um, architectural diagrams, skip that. You can add event listeners, which is how you can do key logging. Obviously, event listeners have proper uh, use cases because um, extensions want to listen to what you do. Uh, you can abuse I.O. with XP Connect. For example, you can read confidential files. You can run executables. Really? OK. <laughs> uh, you can hook scripts into the Firefox engine, obviously. Uh, which means you can access everything in the web page. Uh, there are extensions you should all be using, for example, uh, PWD hash, or PUD hash, as my CTO calls them, uh, which is, uh, allows you to very easily, in a decentralized way, have different passwords for every site, even though you remember one password or a handful of passwords. Oh, hey, another cable. <laughs> cool. Another, another hand for the... Uh, ha no, another round of applause for the AFID people for fixing the cable. Next thing was um, uh, the rights management within uh, Firefox is, is very loose. Uh, there's no, um, no such thing as, as uh, is it on? Whoa. And he runs an out of date Firefox himself. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, that's not his <laughs> laptop. This is, Thanks. never mind. I'm Thank you very much. Being schizophrenic. Um, later. Full screen. Thank you. There you go. So, uh, when you have a. Uh, thank you. When there's an, um, uh, an add on that you've written yourself, you've got complete control over the whole browser. Uh, there's no restrictions on what you can do, um, like in apps on your phone or something. Um, 
by abusing XHR, I presume he means you're not sandboxed to the same thing that normal JavaScript is. So in, in a regular JavaScript page, you can only do AJAX requests to within the same domain. If you're on example.com, uh, you can do AJAX requests to example.com and, and um, app.example.com, but you can't do it to evil.com. So if you manage to inject malware onto, onto bank.com, you can't send, you shouldn't be able to send data to your thing. Extensions don't have this restriction, which there are valid, loads of valid user cases for because you might have an extension that checks Amazon, checks various e-commerce shop prices. They need to be able to do, call, do API calls to Amazon and whatever else merchant you use to, to check, check the prices. Uh, I have no idea what cores is. Cross-origin request. Is it just what I mentioned? Cross-origin resource sharing. Resource sharing, right. Okay, and WebSockets right. equal DDoS. Let's trust take his maths. It, take his word for it. Proof of concept. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so he has created this keylogger. You can find it on GitHub. It's linked from the program. Uh, if you look at the program on the on the OHM wiki, uh, OHM pr program thing. Platform independent because Firefox is platform independent. You can run it on Haiku OS if you like. It is implemented by abusing JavaScript and XP Connect. It hooks into the browser interface and captures all the keystrokes from all the tabs. I have 9.813 minutes left. OK. OK, OK, let's, let's rush, let's rush. <laughs> we have 30 slides to go. Oh, gee. Um, <laughs> skip, skip. <laughs> Uh, that was interesting. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, it was code. Uh, it was code, but it is how you do specific things. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. Right. You're right. I think we're at the point where we're not, we're not giving actual de implementation details. We're just giving an overview of what's possible. Yes. Yes. Yeah. He can scramble. He can encrypt. He can send to where he likes. And um, it's not detected. And there's a progress bar. <laughs> and it logs to a PHP logger because he writes PHP. More code. It's still not detected. That was interesting. Uh, there's loads <laughs> of slides. I don't know what to prioritize. All right. Okay. Uh, well, this is this is kind of the this is boring. Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> it is it is not detected. Uh, it bypasses anti-key loggers and it bypasses on-screen keyboards, so it'll work on on your uh, iPads. Because, of course, it, it's at the Firefox level, not at the hardware or OS level. Um, stuff. Uh, reverse shell, because why not? You can. It's, you can open sockets to anywhere you like. You can do whatever you like. You have stuff. Uh, you can listen to the victim. OK, now what I want to get to is how do you read files? How do you send? How do you read Etsy Shadow or whatever? Well, you can't do that because Firefox can't do that. But OK, he can launch apps. Sorry, this is, we have nine minutes left. Um, still not detected. Heuristic scans don't detect it. Session stealer. Oh, yeah, because it has access to all his cookies. All your cookies. You can just hijack sessions. You, and more. Sorry? And more. And, well, and more. You can control sessions, too. With HTML5, you, you've got data stores and... and Steal all the all data storage. Databases. But even HTTP only flags on various sites, like, that doesn't matter, because you can just yoink. Um, and if they check IP addresses, user agents, okay, instead of stealing a session, you just hijack his session. Global cross-site scripting. <laughs> I'm interested in, in how you get this malware on your PC. Right. Except, except for following the link. That's except, for, <laughs> except for installing it on, on your victim's computer. Shit happens. Let's see. Um, session sort of, okay, yeah, that's, I think, him stealing stuff. Uh, or, no, even uploading files. Right, he can put files on your thing. Oh, that would be quite nasty, right? Uh, Linux password stealer, because, yeah, maybe I shouldn't be using Firefox so much. Or maybe I should just <laughs> update Firefox. Uh, someone shout if I'm, do if I'm being an idiot. We, I still have six, seven slides to go. More web sockets. That's cool. He has a lot of screenshots of virus total. <laughs> Which, yeah. He's proud of it. Tab nabbing. What's tab nabbing? That's What's tab nabbing? Well, as far as I understand it, um, it's, you have two tabs open, and um, you're basically doing cross-site request forgery because you have one session open on one, and you're abusing that session from the other. 
Yeah. Anyone? Why would you do that? Tab napping. Right. What does what? Sounds okay. logical, right? Look it up. That's Homework one. for you. I, you, I, I uh, knew, you know a nice application for that. To, uh, do you know just, what tab uh, napping is? <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I think there's a use for it because if the other one uh, like has his bank account open on eBay or something, uh, the other one can uh, interact with it and steal all the data or something. Okay, that or something. That's, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm on Wikipedia and it says tab nabbing is a computer exploit, is computer exploit and fish and tax with passage series stuff. Uh, it, instead of like uh, l making the user click on something, it's like you open a page that looks like the target page in another tab, like behind, and then the user navigates to the wrong tab and, the fi and gets the phishing site. Oh. So that's tab nabbing. So like you put up a clone tab. Ah, because extensions can change which tab is active. Oh, yeah, so it can do it even worse. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cool, thanks. And thank you. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, how do you... And this is how you get it on the target computer. You craft a web page with uh, the add-on installation <laughs> as a minimum requirement. Oh, yeah, you, you open the website and you really want to see it and you get this nasty pop-up that you really need to install this add-on to continue and, and... I think we all course. kind of can guess what category of websites people might install add-ons to see the content of. <laughs> um, you might not get crowds that you get here, but you'll get a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You'd get my parents. Well, if they went to those category of websites. Banking websites, but you dirty people. Uh, this is how you trigger the installation on, on like page load. It still asks for user conf confirmation, but they may well confirm it. Who here has never installed a Firefox add-on from like not Mozilla.org? <laughs> One, two, two people. Three, four. <laughs> all right, uh, five. excluding yeah, okay, there'll <laughs> okay. be some people who don't install Firefox add-ons at all. But like you know, HTTPS everywhere. That's not on add-ons.mozilla.org. You go to EFF for that, and you right. trust EFF, and you probably do trust EFF. But you know, what if you were DNS spoofed? Never trust third-party add-ons. All add-ons are third-party add-ons. That's why they're an add-on. <laughs> <laughs> Update Firefox to the latest stable build, whoever owns this laptop. Keep a good and regular uh, antivirus, but he just proved that he doesn't find it. Yes. Oh, you just catch the low hanging fruit. I, I suppose because this you could use to actually install proper malware. Um, yes, <laughs> it, is a, it is, I mean, you know, defense in depth, right? If it might, you might leak key logging information, but you might, not everything is through Firefox. Like I, for example, I do my private stuff in Firefox, I do my work stuff in Chromium, because the AWS console loads a lot faster in Chromium. Um, if he had actual malware, and now you all know this, but whatever. Um, if he had actual malware, he could key log both. Um, the, fire, and the firewall should help, partly. More than the, yeah, the antivirus, if we believe him. Firewall is really tough, right? Because it's, okay, we have like no time. Should, okay, okay. okay we have plenty of time. <laughs> oh, but, yeah. Uh, firewall's a bit tough, because it's all over port 80 and 443. How do you distinguish like, encrypted data from data you don't want leaked, right? I don't, I don't know. Well, I, <laughs> hang, please, wait, please wait for a microphone. Please repeat it in the, in the microphone. So I think with the firewall, it's referring to the fact that the callbacks, so when, for example, it pulls down an exe and then the exe tries to call back home, um, you know. Yes. Um, Even beacon, it, beaconing, that kind of thing, that's probably where he's, where he's thinking the firewall might help. Yeah, you're right. Even, even if it tries to send data to evil.com slash something, evil.com might be blacklisted within your firewall. So even if it, yeah, defense in depth, all of that jazz. Um, Keylog a beta add-on, but that's another add-on. <laughs> uh, reverse and analyze code is not practical for 99.9% .9 of people. Disable session data storing. Yeah, that's the, the HTML5 yeah, latest yeah. and greatest. Don't uh, most, oh yeah, okay, if you have an add-on. Speeds you up your, your 
web browsing experience and keeps all your private data securely. On Don't resume from crash. I know people. I know people that have 70 tabs open because they don't know about extensions like read it later. And then they deliberately force crash the browser and the next time they resume from the crash and they, you can recurse these. So he has, when he starts Firefox, he gets restored. Do you want to restore the last 20 tabs? Yes. The 20th tab of those 20 is, do you want to restore the previous 20 tabs? Yes. Do you want to restore the previous 20 tabs? He has 60 tabs or 140 tabs or whatever open in that way. So that's not a very viable thing for him, but perhaps it is. Perhaps it should be. Don't run Firefox with root. Duh. <laughs> um, use safe and configured proxy to block reverse TCP and FTP connections. Well, firewall, right? And the DDoS attempts can effectively be blah. The DDoS attempts can effectively can be effectively blocked by analyzing, restricting, and filtering cause origin header. Your firewall should do that for you, I would imagine. A good one. I don't want to start analyzing every HTTP request manually. This sounds like something the browser should do. Uh, all actually. that. Okay, maybe that he meant as a Mozilla. If any Mozilla devs, I don't know, do something. <laughs> Fix. Do something. Save us. Uh, I think this slide pretty much speaks for itself. Firefox is not broken, except in parts where it's broken. Um, I still, I, I'm still going to use it. Who here is switching because of this talk? No one. Good. Good. <laughs> AVs are helpless. Filters are bypassed. Now it's part of the AVs and Firefox team to make your browsing environment more secure. Yes, and you should be aware of what you're doing, right? And you should educate others who aren't as who don't come to these talks. I mean, if you go to a .ru, sorry, that might be insulting to .ruians. Questions? Yes, I've got a question. Who else is, is a little disappointed by this talk? <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Just a couple, okay. <laughs> sorry? The, the point about session storage is that it's per tab. So actually, session storage of the types of the four, four classes of new storage that come with HTML5, session storage is probably the one you want to be using. You probably don't want to be using the database stuff. You certainly don't want to be using the wind, uh, the um, the the local storage. So I'd, I'd say that of, of all of them, that's probably safest. I don't understand why he would say not to do that. I can't defend his point of view. And Those the other thing is, he also doesn't talk about, around the threats around cross cross-site scripting into his existing plugins. So all of yes. those attacks that, that he talked about in the context of, of us installing a malicious plugin, well, actually, probably, a more valid attack surface is to go after plugins that are legitimate, that have vulnerabilities that allow you to it, execute your own JavaScript. Yes, uh, or even just fingerprint the user. I mean, it's a slightly different threat model, but there are loads of plugins that you, that you can use to fingerprint users, which... Um, uh, it's not always great. Like if, you, if you want to stay anonymous, um, well, if you want to stay anonymous, use the Tor browser bundle. Are there more questions? I see no hands raised. There's so one back there. One. Bye, I can guy. No, no. <laughs> In case you didn't hear, would you recommend we tell people to switch to IE? There is a good graph on the magical interwebs that correlates internet usage with, with piracy, uh, as in ship, old style, yar, pirates. <laughs> Over time, they both go down. Therefore, the two uh, cause one another. Um, no. Obviously, we don't recommend it. Recommend Internet Explorer. It, this is open source. Uh, why do you? How do you trust any software? How do you trust you know anything? Because you can verify what it does. Like, at least I can verify Firefox. I can fix Firefox, or I can pay people to fix Firefox if I can't do it myself, or I can try to convince people to fix Firefox. There's a hands. 
<laughs> I think it was being partly hypothetical. I, I know it was a or troll. Rhetorical. Slash. rhetorical. <laughs> yes. Actually, uh, you make a pretty good point that uh, some people uh, know how to fix their own browser. But my, uh, I don't know how savvy your, your parents are, but my parents most definitely don't even know how a mouse works, Le leave alone how to fix a browser. But um, one of the conclusions in the sheets was um, uh, AVs and Firefox have to keep working on, on, the, on improving the model. But uh, one of the things that are understate, uh, understated in any uh, 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 security uh, feature or concept or even paradigm in, in IT is that uh, people have to be educated. You, you yes. don't install every single add-on you, you get in your face. You don't click on, a, on an extra file you get in your email. For the love of God. <laughs> friends don't let friends install arbitrary add-ons. <laughs> yeah, but th th the only reason you still receive spam with, with Excel files is people still open them. They, they still click. They still click on, on pop-ups. They still click on, on... And they just don't know any better. They're well, uh, I, I would like to call them sheep, but it's... it's, <laughs> it's that, that's just my point of view. No. Um, I think one of the most important things is to, to educate the users. And, yes, and which, which is what Ajin was trying to do. Yeah, no, well, he was trying to educate us. I mean, uh, keep an eye on your add-ons, uh, go through them if you don't, don't trust them, but my parents won't go through uh, heaps of, of uh, JavaScript and, and XML files. Uh, <laughs> they wouldn't know where to look for the file to begin with. Um, but. Yeah, I, uh, my, my point of view is just uh, people should, uh, well, not have a driver's license for the internet, but um, no, maybe even that's not a bad idea. <laughs> controversy, Anyways, controversy. My, my Any more, more questions? questions or remarks or... Uh, or anyone li wants to do a lightning talk? No, I, I don't think there's any time. No, I think but the, the time for this talk is up. And <laughs> okay. uh, I just want to uh, give a nice round of applause for these two wonderful uh, stand-ups. <laughs> and who had to talk? I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I'm terrible with names. Um, the girl over there yeah. who, who found the, the slides. Who found, who found yeah. the slides, yeah. And catalyzed Nice this. catch. And the AFIT people who found the cable. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and you for uh, turning up. Yeah, maybe we should uh, <laughs> uh, give the, bring, the t bring these two nice speakers uh, to, uh, back to the Media Plaza tent that it was the first occasion that someone else did a presentation. <laughs> Impromptu. <laughs> so you become speakers. You get also to try to get you with a yellow band now. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. With all the vips for it. <laughs> cool. And um, yeah, this concludes this uh, this talk, which was quite uh, slightly uh, off the program that we uh, first envisioned. But I think it was a, um, a, w a wonderful experience. Quick <laughs> final thing: you, if you Google the talk name, you might well find it on YouTube. He may have sp said this before. It may have been filmed. It may have been uploaded to YouTube. Yeah. You may get much better content than what we could um, <laughs> divine. And uh, feel free to contact him, obviously. Yeah. Or, or me, if you find me. I'm the guy no, that looks like him. a terrorist. Spam him. Well, I mean, <laughs> you don't have my contact details. No, it's not, it, it's not <laughs> ethical to spam him. Just oh, okay. send, send him a nice, cl nice clean uh, URL of the stream we have just made. <laughs> okay. so, uh, send, send him a Firefox add-on. Put your add -on. hand on it. <laughs> Yeah, send him this talk, but yeah. he needs to install a custom add-on to watch it. <laughs> and for the yeah, uh, for the and for the next presentation, sign him up for the sign him up for uh, the PowerPoint karaoke. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.